guys for today's video I kind of just want to have a personal heart-to-heart -heart chat with you guys about something that I really struggled with and I know that a lot of people also deal with and that is anxiety anxiety is something that I feel like is thrown around a lot um, that has a lot of misunderstanding around it and just a lot of fear and confusion about and things like that and I wanted to kind of share my experience and share things that I've learned that have really, really helped me. Now first I kind of wanted to explain when I'm saying anxiety what I mean because I do think today that word is thrown around for so many things that really aren't anxiety. So I just think, so when I'm ex talking about anxiety for what I have struggled with, this is what I mean. So I've kind of been an anxious person most of my life, but it really, really peaked um, a couple of years ago. And by that, I mean I was having panic attacks that were landing me in the emergency room. I was, I was at my now husband's house. We were just watching a movie, and then all of a sudden I was short of breath. And I got to the point where we walked upstairs, I fainted to the ground, my all my limbs were tingling, numb, I couldn't walk. It was a panic attack out of nowhere, like nothing, just it just happened. Um, there was another time where TMI, I went to the bathroom 25 times in like four hours because my body was so under like stress and anxiety that that's what happened. So for me, it manifests in the physical. So basically in my experience, what anxiety is, is it's your brain going like this and then your body for me is what reacts. So for that, it's, I get super quick breathing. Like I can't keep up with my breathing. I get really dizzy and lightheaded. I get horrible stomach situations. I fainted, I've fallen down. My limbs go numb where I can't walk. Um, but a lot of it is my stomach. That is the biggest, biggest thing that gets impacted by anxiety. And then I feel I'm just done. Like I'm so sick that I can't function. So that started happening a couple of years ago where I was actually having like uncontrollable symptoms. And what people don't understand necessarily about anxiety is that basically what it is, is it's a cycle that you go through that in your head something happens and then it manifests itself however it does for you personally for me it was physical and then that made me really short and irritated because you kind of had this sense of ugh inside like that's all i can explain it like it's just this ugh and sense of urgency so it's kind of like imagine if you're feeling rushed like super super rushed and you're like ah, that's how i felt all the time so it's like this constant urgency, nervousness, overwhelming stress. Anxiety for me is really, really hard to completely explain what it feels like, what it's like, but basically for my personal experience, it completely turned me into a different person. Like my mom told me that I was the most joyful baby. I was the happiest little kid. I was always so joyful, so outgoing, like that was my personality. And then when I started really struggling with anxiety, I was opposite. I didn't want to go anywhere. I, I couldn't even stay at a mall trip. Like Ben and I would go to the mall. I would randomly get an anxiety attack and we'd have to leave. Like I'd be like, where's the door? Where's the door? Like literally I'm not joking. Like that's how my life was. And then I'd become really short with people because I was constantly feeling this Ugh, inside. So then anything that happens really shakes you because you're already feeling this overwhelming stress that it's like too much and so then you are short with people you're irritated and then you start to get really negative and really depressed and sad and i was the most negative i've ever been in my entire life like ben will tell you he was scared like he was like oh who is this person like what happened and he said he's seen in his life how anxiety has um, affected people and it made him really nervous for me um, because I was like turning into someone that was not me and the hardest thing about it is you know it's not you but you can't fix it so like for me I would know I would be 
um, being super, super negative and unpleasant and short and I felt just like a burden. Sorry, my overalls are falling. Um, I felt like a constant burden. I felt like anxiety was who I was, that that's all I was, that freaking out and not being able to do normal things was who I was, that constantly being sick over nothing was who I was, and then I started to feel depressed and negative and every single thing in my life was bad. Like I was, okay, not every single thing, but I was looking at everything with a negative perspective. And basically it just ruined everything. Like I was, I remember telling Ben, I was like, I try so hard to be happy and I just can't. Like I would tell him, I have so many good things in my life. I have you, I have my family, I have my job. Like I have so many wonderful things. I'm getting married. Like this is still when we were like engaged and things I was dealing with this. And I was like, but I like literally can't feel it because my body like won't let me. And then I finally started to go to counseling. And I highly recommend this for anyone. I think counseling sometimes has this weird thing around it like it's bad. I think everyone should go whether you deal with uh, mental health or anything. Like I think everyone should at least like check in, talk about things. And that helped me a ton because my counselor gave me actual like steps to take when I was having anxiety to really calm it down. I want to share a couple of things um, that I learned with you guys. So, the, and I feel like this is a little bit all over the place because explaining anxiety, explaining how you feel, explaining what you went through, it's kind, it's kind of hard to like put into words what the experience is, but I hope you guys are kind of getting an idea. It's basically physically burdening me and mentally and emotionally, and it was affecting my loved ones and myself. It was making me feel like someone I knew I wasn't, but I didn't know how to change it. And my counselor started to talk me through things. You know, you go through what's going on, where things are coming from, all that. But then something that was really important to me was to actually get steps. Like she asked when I came in, like, what is your goal out of this? Like what, I need to tighten these a lot more. She was like, what is your goal? Like, what is it that you want to really get out of this? And I said, I want to actually have steps for when I'm having an anxiety attack to calm myself down, to get through through it um, to manage it better because right now I felt so out of control like I had no control over my body over my mind and so a few of the things that she taught me that I think are literally so important one it's gonna sound duh breathing exercises and I'm not joking I know everyone says this and it sounds dumb but one of the things about anxiety is when you're starting to get an attack or you're just feeling really anxious you automatically start <sighs> breathing so quickly um, because that's just kind of our body's reaction to being like nervous and overwhelmed so to really just like it automatically calms your body down because the thing that made me faint from my panic attack was doing that I was hyperventilating when I went to the emergency room that's what they said they said you hyperventilated and when you have um, too much CO2, CO2 going out and your oxygen is it's all off, your uh, limbs start to go numb and then you faint. And so that's what happens. So basically, one of the things that kind of was also, it's hard to explain, but one of the things that made me anxious was the thought of getting a panic attack. So if I started to breathe like that, if I started to feel like that, then it would get worse because I would be scared of the panic attack. So then I would breathe more. So when I learned that what made me faint or what made my limbs go numb was hyperventilating, I knew that by breathing slowly, it literally couldn't happen. And that is so powerful when you are going through that because at least, I know there's like two different types of panic attacks or there's like classified as, I remember my counselor said, are you just anxious or are you also scared of getting the attacks? And I was also scared of getting the attacks, so that was like something else. And basically, knowing that if I slowed my breathing and I had control over my breathing, then I would not faint. I would, it could not physically escalate. That helped me so much. And my husband is the sweetest angel and he would literally sit behind me and we'd breathe in and we'd breathe out at the same time and that would work so many times, you guys. Like, I, I highly recommend this if you're struggling. The second thing she said is, you need to think of 
what is the worst thing that can happen? It's so like one thing about me is I'm terrified of throwing up. I always have been. I, I don't really know where that's from. We actually tried to figure that out and it's kind of a mystery. Why, why am I so terrified? But that's one of the biggest things I'm scared of. And we found that a lot of my anxiety was rooting in, rooted in fear of sickness, fear of getting sick while I'm out and about. Like that's just something that's really a uh, struggle for me. And I don't like the feeling of not being at home and feeling not good. Like that was a big, a big thing. So she would ask me, say you're at the mall and you start to not feel good because pretty much when we tracked where my anxiety was coming from or where the attacks were coming from, a lot of it was rooted and I started to not feel good. But that again was linked to being anxious. So it's kind of like this huge cycle. So basically she was like, what's the worst, worst possibility? And I'd be like, I'd throw up in public. And she's like, and what's so horrible about that? And then I'd be like, I'm uncomfortable because I'm in public people might see me and I'd be embarrassed, like whatever it is. And she would say, okay, so the absolute worst thing is that you'd be embarrassed. You know what I mean? So it starts to kind of put into perspective these huge, large fears and kind of shows you like, this is literally the worst thing that could happen. And that started to help me kind of have perspective over my fears. And that helped me to kind of like think, I don't know, it just, it helps them not seem so ginormous. Um, another thing I'm terrified of is planes. <laughs> if you guys have seen my Nashville uh, video, you can see when we take off, I'm really scared of planes, but I've also been, you know, doing it anyway. And she said like, what's the worst thing <coughs> that could happen? And I was like, well, we could crash and die. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, but you believe in God and you'd be with God. So it's kind of like um, just putting into perspective things. And then she also said, that another thing was something that is so helpful and it's so scary is literally doing the things that scare you. And so for example, I was at a point where I was so anxious that I didn't want to go to Target by myself. I was so paranoid of getting abducted, of um, somebody trying, like, trying to kidnap me. I was terrified of shootings. I never want to go in public anywhere. I didn't want to go to concerts. I didn't want to go to sporting events. Literally, I told her if I go to anywhere, I have catastrophic thinking. All I'm thinking is where are the exits? What if this happens? I'm watching every single person and what they do. Like that was my brain. It was constantly this and I was afraid of everything. Like literally everything, you guys. We would go to Target and if I saw someone that seemed a little off, I would stare at them and be terrified and just want to leave and my breathe. Like it's called catastrophic thinking and it's literally like all you think about is the absolute horrible, most worst case scenario and it just controls your mind that makes you so afraid and so she said you kind of have to think of a couple of things and I, oh, I cannot remember the actual term for it what she said oh she said it's like gathering evidence so you go to target nothing bad happens that's evidence you go to the mall nothing bad happens evidence you go to a concert, nothing bad happens, evidence. And she said, you start to gather this reality of good evidence that nothing bad is happening. Does it mean nothing bad will ever happen? No, but it starts to show you how minimal those times really are and that you can go shopping and you're fine. You can go enjoy a concert and you're fine. And it doesn't have to, the possibility of something bad or scary happening doesn't have to dictate your life because you've got all this evidence of times that's fine. So for me, I was terrified of elevators. I sound like a freak and I understand that, but I was terrified of elevators. I don't know why I didn't want to get stuck. I wouldn't, didn't want to be in there with someone I thought was scary. Like, so I started taking the elevator and then eventually I wasn't scared of it anymore. Um, I started to, now I could go to the mall and I don't care. I could go to Target, I don't care. Um, I started to go on flights. I hate flying, I'm terrified of flying, but now I can do it. And so I think facing things head on when you're scared is a huge, huge way to overcome because honestly, if you don't, you'll never see that it's fine. You'll never see that you can do it. And I think when you have anxiety, proving to yourself you can do things is so important. I remember telling her that I felt stupid because I was like, anyone can literally go to Target. That's not an accomplishment. And she said, you're not giving yourself any credit. If you have anxiety surrounding something and you accomplish it, that is something worth being proud of. And I think when you're anxious, you look at yourself as, 
this is just normal stuff that people do so it's not an accomplishment if I do something normal no it is if if you're scared of something if something makes you overwhelmed or anxious or panicky and you do it you need to give yourself credit for that and I think another thing too is when you're anxious a lot of times you feel like a weak embarrassing burden at least I did you're not you're not you feel that way sometimes but you're not and I think just understanding that like any little accomplishment is a really big step and giving yourself credit and also she said I needed to be less hard on myself because I would constantly be beating myself down like for example we went to um, South Dakota a while a while ago I think this was maybe eight months ago or a year I don't know it's been a long time uh, we had to stop like 10 times because I was so anxious that was probably one of my worst anxiety attacks and my mind was fine that was one of the biggest things my mind would be fine like I wouldn't be nervous I wouldn't be anxious but my body was stuck in this cycle that I my body would have the symptoms of being anxious like I'd have to go to the bathroom I couldn't breathe very well I felt dizzy and then I would get mentally anxious because of my body's symptoms it was a cycle and that was the worst trip ever I felt horrible and once we got to the hotel and stuff, I was okay. And I told my counselor and I was like, I'm so embarrassed. Like, and she goes, no, do you understand that you had one of the worst anxiety attacks of your life and you still continued on that five hour trip and you went to the event that you went there for? That is something to be proud of. And so I think that when you have anxiety, you really discredit things because you think, oh, I shouldn't feel that way. Um, but it is really a accomplishment. So that's kind of my story of what I was dealing with, things that were hard for me, and just kind of what it looked like, and some of the things that she taught me. So another thing she taught me is mindfulness, and this is basically learning to slow your brain down because anxiety basically has your brain going like this and it can't stop. So she said you basically need to learn how to stop your brain, and she told me as well that there are different um, like neur neuron neural pathways. I don't know pathways in your brain that you literally create and you have to like teach them to create a new pathway so if your pathway is always um like i'm going i'm walking out to my car someone might kidnap me that if that's your pathway which was mine you need to literally change it to i'm going out to my car i'm safe like you're still aware you're not just like life's great like you still are safe but teaching yourself to create a new pathway a create a new way of thinking and mindfulness really helps that because it helps you to focus on one thing and slow your thinking down so for example what she would have me do is she said fold your basket of laundry and say every single step you're doing so say i'm picking up my white shirt and folding it in half i'm taking the sleeves i'm putting it on the bed I'm putting it on the hanger I'm hanging up whatever it is and it sounds like the most tedious and it is and you feel kind of dumb sometimes but it literally teaches your brain to process one thing at a time and slow it down because the biggest thing about anxiety is like you're you can't stop your brain and then your body reacts and then you're in this panic so if you're able to slow your breathing slow your thinking think of what's the worst possible thing okay that's manageable calm it and just get into a place where it can't escalate that is crucial allowing yourself to use these steps where an anxiety attack can't escalate is so crucial because then you feel like you're in so much more control so those were things that absolutely helped so much and my mind was getting a lot better and I was feeling like I had a little bit more control but then there was a day that I went to the bathroom 25 times and I was so frustrated because I was like, I don't, I can control it in my mind, but my body still reacts. My, I can't control what my body does. And I was so anti-medication, you guys. I was so anti-medication. I wanted to do this on my own. I didn't want to be in a spot where something had to help me to be normal or to feel good. I wanted to be able to overcome it with God and with steps. And I think as a Christian, anxiety can be really hard because a lot of people will tell you, 
we'll just have more faith in God, we'll just rely more on God. I rely on God with my entire soul. I pray to God with my entire heart. I have such strong faith. And I think one of the gifts he gives us is doctors. And you guys, I just, I want to tell you, I felt so ashamed of medicine, of the idea of having to use something to help me. But you guys, I went to my doctor because I had had enough. At that point, I had been in the emergency room. I had gone to the bathroom to the point where I was so sick and dehydrated. And I just got frustrated because I had talked with um, people in my family and they had all recommended that I go to my doctor. I talk about medicine options with him. Um, and I was just always like, no, I want to be stronger than this. And it got to the point where I was like, okay, I have personally done every possible step that I can do to fix this, to aid this, to improve. And now it's to the point where I can't control how my body reacts and I need help. So that's when I went to my doctor. I talked to him about my symptoms. He's been my doctor my entire life since I was little. So he knew everything that I was. He had recommended medicine, but I just didn't want to do it. So I'd gotten to the point where I was like, I'm ready to try this. And he gave me the lowest dose, like lowest dose of something. And you guys, it changed everything. Like I think one of the things I was the most scared of was having weird symptoms where I didn't feel like myself. Cause I've heard some people say like, oh yeah, my anxiety was better, but then I was lethargic and I was just like sitting there zoned out, like didn't have personality, got depressed. You guys, I have never felt more myself in my entire life. Literally, it made me the most myself I've ever felt. Basically what this did for me was it took away everything that didn't feel me so that the real me came out. And it's so weird to say that I had no symptoms, you guys. I did not feel lethargic. I didn't feel weird. I didn't feel out of it. Quite literally, it was like my joy came back. My confidence came back. My like positivity and perspective on life came back. My health was so improved because when I did um, a super long health program, my nutritionist said, your cells act as if they're under stress all of the time so they cannot heal. And that was due to anxiety. I have had so many health issues in my life and so many are because of anxiety. And this medicine that I take, it literally um, made me me again. And it almost makes me like wanna cry because I don't think you, like people understand that when you're trapped in anxiety, you aren't yourself. You try and you try with all your heart to be yourself, to be happy. But when you're bogged down by that constant feeling, it's like almost impossible to just thrive, be healthy, be happy. And literally Ben has told me, he's like, I have never seen a more joyful person. You are the most joyful person I know. And that's because I'm not plagued with this horrible feeling that I always had. And so like the medicine that I take basically takes away that feeling of urgency, that feeling of like my stomach getting upset, my breathing, so it basically takes away the overwhelming feeling. Thank you, baby. That's good. It basically just takes away all those feelings that I couldn't control and makes me feel like I can actually be who I actually am, which is a joyful, happy person. So I'm actually gonna bring Ben in for a little bit so that ending this video, he can kind of tell you from his perspective um, what it's like. I saw Taylor Hammond do this video about anxiety and she brought her husband on and that gave me the idea to bring Ben on because I think it can really help um, when there's another perspective on like kind of what it was like. So, baby, he'll tell you kind of his experience with it. What would you say it was like when I didn't have medicine and when I was just like in the worst of it? 
So what was really difficult is it was kind of emotions that she couldn't control. Like we couldn't go to like a shopping mall. We couldn't go to different stuff like that because after about five or about maybe one store, two stores, mm -hmm. she'd get super anxious and she'd feel like she was going to throw up and we'd have to leave and it would kind of just ruin the rest of the day mm -hmm. because she'd feel sick and anxious the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And so it was just kind of like emotions like that where she wouldn't be able to control it and we really couldn't go out and do anything. Mm -hmm. Or if she had a lot of stress at work, it would kind of ruin the rest of the day for her even if she was to go home, have be able to relax, different things like that. It, she'd be so wound up that she just couldn't release it. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where I was sometimes scared to be around her. That's um, sad, Just yeah. because I didn't know what to expect and it would switch so quickly. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was, it was just really tough because I could see who Rachel was and I could see that this was not her and she would be really kind of depressed because it was like she knew it wasn't her and she didn't want to be that way but there was nothing she could do about it mm -hmm. and, and so that was the toughest part is just seeing her struggle through that and knowing that she's not herself and that she can't get to herself and she'd cry like deep tears I don't know if that's the right way to say it but she'd cry a lot just because she's like this isn't me I I, I don't know what I can do I, I try to be some try to be myself and I just myself just doesn't come through because all this anxiety just kind of pours out of her. And I think a hard thing too is like it's really really hard on the people around you because you're not yourself, because you're so negative, because they kind of have to be on their tiptoes around you and then that makes you feel like a pile of poop because you literally know you're burdening those around you so it's like you're struggling yourself and you're also making it a struggle for people around you so that's where like that shame and embarrassment and depression can come in because you just feel like a waste kind of and then when you can't get yourself out of it it's really hard well I think the hardest part too is you're not able to enjoy life mm -hmm. we couldn't go out and do anything um, because within first half hour it would be a kind of anxiety attack we'd have to leave. Like and then it, it gets frustrating for the other person too or for whoever because it's like you want to go out and do stuff mm -hmm. and you get out there and you kind of leave really annoyed because you got halfway through a store and then yeah. you have to go. Yeah, and I think something too is like Ben, you guys have seen, he's so sweet. So like there was never a time when he made me feel bad. Um, but... I always got scared because I'm like, he's gonna get tired of not being able to be normal, not like always having to like consider, oh, Rachel might be anxious. Oh, Rachel won't want to do this. And I just felt like such a like, ugh, you know? Well, and it scared me too, because I mean, we don't have kids now, but I was scared for our kids that are like, are they gonna have to walk on mm -hmm. pins and needles just to make sure that they don't make mom mad or, or anxious or different stuff like that. So that's like a little bit of the bad stuff. So then I told them about like my struggle with deciding to go on medicine just because I wanted like my mind and God and like all of that to overcome and I didn't want to have to depend on medicine to feel good. I didn't want to not feel myself. Um, but then I said how like I feel my mo the most myself I've ever been. Mm -hmm. So then could you, just to kind of end this video, could you tell them a little like kind of what you've seen since I've been on the medicine? Because I think medicine is something that has kind of a bad stigma around it. I think it'd be good to kind of share our experience with people. Yeah, I mean, her mom would always say that she was the most joyful little kid that she's ever seen. And that was kind of the reason that they stopped having kids is because they kind of hit the jackpot with this joyful little bundle of goo <laughs> and and so I would see glimpses where she was happy but it would quickly be overcome with either fear or anxiety or different stuff like that and then there was nothing I could do to overcome or help her overcome it where now it's like she's always giggling she's always goofy she's always just smiling it's I mean it's very few and far between that she has like an actual bad day because mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of healthy to have a bad day every once Yeah. <laughs> but like now it's it's something where she's joyful all the time. 
-hmm. And it's not a kind of loopy, joyful yeah. where it's like you're hopped up on drugs mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. It's she's actually we're actually able to go to a mall, and now I kind of have to say, all right, I'm. <laughs> I'm done with the mall instead of us having to sprint out before the anxiety attack mm -hmm. sits in. And, and I mean, we would go to, we went to someone in her family who lived in a different state and we I told them were about driving that. there. And it's like every five minutes yep. I had to stop and pull over. And, and now it's like we can go on a plane, we can go on a long distance drive, all those different mm -hmm. things. And it's not an issue. Yeah. And, and to go just to see that difference, not only does it allow her to kind of experience life to the fullest and not have to be kind of cowarding mm -hmm. to to everything, it's we're able to go do stuff and we're able to hang out with friends and we're able to do all those different things that kind of make life enjoyable that we weren't able to do before. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's just nice because it, it doesn't feel like she's kind of, slave to the medicine really oh, either yeah. there's been like times where she's forgot to take it where she's been fine mm -hmm. um and and so it, it's just it's allowed her to her body just to relax a little bit where before it was so wound up and it's just kind of flowed through to every other part of her life and, and it, it's been cool to see and i would say too like um kind of when i talked about your brain rewiring different pathways it's kind of too like my body has just it's been allowed to kind of re go into a new cycle where it's not this cycle of urgency all the time. So one of the reasons I wanted to try medicine was because I wanted help with my body rerouting because I couldn't do it. And I'm not saying medicine is for everyone. Of course, just talk to your doctor. But I just wanted to kind of shed some light on something that I think a lot of people feel shame about or fear about. Um, and medicine literally it made me back to how I actually am. Um, so to close out this video, would you have any tips for boyfriends, family members, husbands, just to how to like interact if somebody has anxiety? Like now I feel like I'm in such a good place that he doesn't really have to like alter behavior and stuff for me because I do feel so good. But when I didn't feel good, like what were some things you found were helpful if someone's kind of dealing with someone with that? Yeah, so I mean, one kind of easy thing was a it was a quote from Grey's Anatomy, oh, yeah. <laughs> where the this person was having an anxiety attack and the husband was just being a complete bunghole. Like he was just being an absolute jerk to her, and the doctor like pulled him aside and was like, "These symptoms may not be real for you, but they're real for her," and it kind of like gave an eye opening. Um, it was an eye-opening moment where it's like, I could just sit there and get frustrated at Rach over all these different things, but it's stuff that she's actually experiencing. And mm -hmm. and so that kind of was a big kind of eye-opener. And, and yeah, it was just a TV show, but it was a good line um, that, I, that I heard. And so I tried to have that type of mindset whenever um, we were going through something like that, where it was... I mean, there were times where I really had to bite my tongue and not, yeah. and not, like, every time we went to a mall. I mean, I'm not kidding. We would have to, like, sprint out of the mall after yeah, the Yeah, like, I store. told them I'd be like, where's the door? We have to go. We have to find the door. Like, it, it was, we'd, it was bad. Like, we'd drive to Mall of America, which is not a, it's not five-minute drive. No, it's, it's. And within ten yeah. minutes, yeah. we'd, she'd be starting to kind of, like, getting anxiety, walking to the store, and then. Yeah we'd leave right away. So it's just kind of having that empathy for for people that are going through stuff like that was kind of the biggest thing for me. And one thing I would also say is don't, he never did this, don't say, just chill out. I had people in my life say that to me and it's hard because that's literally all you want to do, but it's more than that. And I would say one of the things that really helped was he always, um, like reminded me of who I actually was and helped lift shame that I have. So like when I talked about being scared of medicine or feeling dumb about it, he would talk about it in a way where I wouldn't feel shameful about it. So I think just if you're dealing with someone who's struggling, kind of revalidating like their humanity and their worth because it can be really you can be swallowed by what you're dealing with so that was something he really helped me with like he didn't make me feel stupid um 
he made me feel like taking medicine is just like a good option it's not like shameful and I told him about how you would like sit and breathe with me like he really was awesome like so awesome well and I think too is I never brought I never like told Rachel that she should go on medicine yeah I, I kind of wanted it to be her decision but it got to a point where like I was about ready to kind of have the conversation with her of like, like I was trying to figure out in my head how to have that conversation of like, Rach, I know this is not something you want to do, but it, you might need additional help with it. So I was like right at that point, but I was really glad that she kind of came to it on her own decision. Um, mm -hmm. where it wasn't me saying like, you just need to go on medicine or, or you just need to do this and, and cool off or whatever. Yeah. It was something where it was, like her decision because she wanted to get the most out of life and yeah and so I mean I'm really grateful for not only the the technology to develop these medicines because it's incredible how she can still be herself yeah but just get help with calming her body down and making these these nerves kind of subside so yeah. I'm grateful for that and I'm grateful for Rage just for having the courage to cause like like she said there's a bad stigma mm -hmm. about just being drugged up and that's yeah. not the case of, of what it is yeah. your body might not be able to actually allow you to relax and to, to release some of that anxiety and I think too there's this perception that you're like on these super strong medicines that like alter your brain I'm literally on like one of the lowest doses possible so I think like I had talked to my brother too and I was like, I just feel so embarrassed and whatever. He goes, Rachel, they're not going to put you on like some narcotic. Like you're on this really, 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 at least for me, low, low dose. So it didn't alter me. It just helped me, oops, it just helped me be calm and be able to be myself. So I think another thing too is for just the community around that person to, to mm -hmm. come alongside and to to not use it as like sh she's kind of a loony bin that needs to be drugged up in order to be sane because that's not the case mm -hmm. it, it's it's not something where it's not a disease it's not I mean it's mental illness just yeah. because there is that anxiety but it's not a shameful thing it's not something mm -hmm. that they can control yeah. or it's not something they brought upon themselves it's usually dictated from external sources or yeah. or from genetics or something like that so it, it's not like you're less of a person mm -hmm. so just getting rid of that stigma of like they might be a loose cannon or or different things like that i think is really Im impactful and powerful for that person just to be able to get help and i think um one more thing that i would say is your environment is super super important so like our marriage is just really happy and really like peaceful and comforting like there's I'm not saying we never bicker or things like that, but like it's just such a safe, joyful place. And then also like our home is just relaxing and inviting and calming and just joyful. So I think being in a job that you like don't hate, you don't have to have your dream job, but a job that, you know, doesn't suck the life out of you, having a calm place to come home to, being in relationships that are like life giving to you and give you peace and joy literally can transform so much. So your environment and who you're around and what you're around can really, really positively or Im negatively impact you as well. So I think just the environment I'm in really really helps i've just like noticed living here with ben being married in our apartment like i just love it here so that has also that's also helped me no all I, right <laughs> no i mean there's still people there's still just to treat them with respect and and not look down at them like i think about some professional or some celebrities or something like that like i remember royce white um, he's a basketball player who played at Hopkins and then went and played at Iowa State and he like almost got blackballed from the NBA because he was deathly afraid of flying and, and it gave him a ton of anxiety and, and different stuff and so it's like he wasn't able to do what he absolutely loves just because he's absolutely terrified and gets panic attacks mm -hmm. from flying so and he had so just things like that where it's looking at them as people and really caring about them. Yeah. Because they are people. They are just 
they have certain things that their body doesn't allow them to do. So just keeping that mindset. And I think just encouraging, um, Ben was really good about that instead of, um, what's that word? Not degrading them, demeaning, demeaning them over what they're scared of. Cause I told them like, I'd be scared to go in an elevator. To most people that's like so stupid that they'd be like, are you kidding me? But instead of doing that, just being like encouraging about it and just understanding. So yeah, that's really, that's it I think for this video if you don't have anything else. Well, thank you to Ben for coming on. I thought that that would be kind of nice just to have like another perspective on here. But I just want to do this video. It's obviously more vulnerable and uh, I haven't shared this on my channel before. I haven't really talked about this with a ton of people besides those that I'm really close with. But I think it's important because a lot of people deal with things and I've just seen how my life has transformed from medicine, counseling, environment, just like all these different things. And I think if I can help someone not feel like they're on their own or like alone in things like this and help them understand that they're still an important person and that this is just something that they might need help with. Always talk to your doctor. I highly recommend counseling. I think it's good for everyone um, and just having loving people around you. But I think that's it for this video. Um, if you guys liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave. That helps me out a lot. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching, commenting. Um, it means a lot to me. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.